Okay, hello everyone. Thank you very much for welcoming me and for this opportunity. Uh, so I'm a first year PhD student at the Paris Brain Institute and at Sorbonne University. And my PhD is about investigating the progression of Parkinson's disease using explainable artificial intelligence. So a little bit of background. Parkinson's disease is a progressive degenerative um, disorder of the nervous system. It, and it is the second cause of motor disability of neurological origin in the elderly. It involves a generalized slowing of movement and at least one other symptom of resting trauma or rigidity. It can be evaluated clinically, um, usually with tests such as MDS, UPDRS, 2 to 4 for motor functions, and also using MRI and dopamine scan transporters, uh, dopamine transporter scans. It has non-motor symptoms that can precede motor dysfunction that by more than 10 years. And it has two main chemical abnormalities. The first one is the degeneration of dopaminergic neurons in the basal ganglia. So the substantial nigral pass compactor neurons send long axonal projection to the striatum and the neurodegeneration deprives the striatum of crucial dopaminergic inputs and interrupts important, important motor feedback pathways. And the other biochemical abnormality is aggregates of cytoplasmic protein, also called Lewy bodies and Lewy neurites, which are composed of alpha-synuclein protein mainly and ubiquitin. It still remains unknown from where the initial alpha-synuclein aggregate originates. Parkinson's has variable disease progression pathways that has been proposed. It has a very variable phenotypic presentation and can present motor and non-motor symptoms such as rapid eye movement or REM sleep behavior disorder, RBD, and cognitive decline. Isolated RBD is a prodromal form of Parkinsonism, allowing to study changes before the start of the disease and the symptoms. There's several progression pathways that has been proposed in the literature. For instance, the body first phenotype or bottom up um, trajectory would start from the peripheral nervous system and the enteric nervous system going up to the central nervous system, so the brain. And this has been associated with RBD as a prodromal phenotype for the disease. There's also the brain first um, phenotype, which would start in the central nervous system or the olfactory bulb and go down to the peripheral system or the enteric nervous system. And for example, these type of progressions do not fully account for the heterogeneity of Parkinson's disease. This is why better understanding the disease heterogeneity and mechanisms of progressions of lesions in the brain is crucial. To do so, we use MRI to study changes in Parkinson's lesions and ILBD brains. Diffusion-weighted MRI allows a quantitative analysis of the magnitude and directionality of water molecules. So it provides biomarkers of tissue microstructure. Image quality transfer, or IQT, is a machine learning technique which uses random forests. It allows a better segmentation on diffusion maps and a more accurate measurements of diffusion biomarkers. And therefore improves the delineation of small nuclei. We also use neuromelanin-weighted MRI, or sensitive MRI, which provides markers of dopaminergic nigral neuron degeneration. For instance, um, for nuclei rich in neuromelanin, such as the substantia nigra or the locus cerulis. Quantitative susceptibility, susceptibility mapping, or QSM, allows to study the, the iron deposition in the brain and which can usually correlate with neuromelanin 
and can help us have a better segmentation of nuclei and small brain structures. My main objective is to model the spatiotemporal brain changes in Parkinson's based on MRI, for now specifically diffusion-weighted MRI biomarkers, according to patient-specific clinical phenotypes using AI. For this, we want to identify and compare the pathological progression of Parkinsonian patients, IRBD patients, which is isolated RBD patients, and healthy controls. We want to classify and understand the regions of interest. It's approximately 10 regions from oh, small structures and nuclei from the brainstem and basal forebrain. We have two main data sets that we're using right now called Iceberg and Parkinson's Progression Markers Initiative, or PPMI. Iceberg is from the, it takes place at the Paris Brain Institute. These two studies are longitudinal. They last for at least five or six years minimum. And they both have used multimodal imaging. So Iceberg is monocentric and PPMI is in the United States and is, I think, five centers. They both use the same tests for RBD, so RBD questionnaire and Epworth sleepiness scale, but the Iceberg one at the Paris Brain Institute also use video polysomnography. For the method, the first one is the image processing pipeline. It started with pre-processing, so we did denoising, the correction of distortions in the diffusion-weighted MRIs and ID currents. And then the first method was the image quality transfer, IQT. So this gave us high-resolution diffusion maps, and it was twice as much upsampling, and it went under one millimeter isotropic. Then we used it to concatenate dozens of different brain to form templates. Basically, it's the same way as you do atlases. For each condition, Parkinson's, IOBD, and healthy controls. Then to, better, to do a better segmentation later, we are using co-registration. So this with QSM, T1-weighted, so anatomical MRI, and neuromelanin-sensitive MRI. These are all overlaid with the diffusion images. And this showed us, um, improved the spatial localization and will ensure better delineation of the 10 brainstem and basal forebrain nuclei affected in PD, in literature. And then we want to retrieve the metrics for each diffusion-weighted MRI biomarkers for each region of interest. This is an example of IQT, so image quality transfer. From the iceberg cohort, this is a patient uh, who has Parkinson's, but you cannot tell yet. Uh, even though he's diagnosed, we can't see any lesion. But this is on the, the A part is the originally processed image, and then you can see uh, the super resolved image, how much, how much more defined it is. We use those images to form templates. This is a super resolved template of healthy volunteers' brain, 14 brains concatenated in, um, this is several slices, but this is one and only brain, it's super resolved. Then what we want to do is model this metrics that we're going to extract from this, um, these templates. So, as you can see, there are preliminary results from DeFolco and colleagues, a very recent article. They trained this model on the PPMI cohort. This shows the progressive onset of clinical endpoints from pre-symptomatic to post-diagnosis stages and it's just the progression from the most normal 
to the maximum pathological changes according to Parkinsonian age. And inspired by this article, we want to reproduce it with only diffusion MRI biomarkers according to Parkinsonian age. So they've done it with um, clinical and that scan um, data. So we want to reproduce the same technique with all the diffusion weighted biomarkers, so the apparent diffusion coefficient, fractional anisotropy, mean radial and axial diffusivity and free water for each region of interest and for each condition, Parkinson's, IRBD, and healthy controls. And for the next steps, we want to add variables. Anosmia or severe hyposmia is highly correlated with RBD and therefore with Parkinsonism. Cognitive decline as well, we could add it as a new variable with rapid or slower cognitive decline. Another technique that we could implement is tractography. So bundles between two um, specific regions of interest along the um, direction of the water molecules in the white matter fiber. This could help us explore three circuits related to first more olfactory structures, cognitive structures, or structures related to sleep disorders. And any change in the bundle, so the beams in the tractography, would indicate uh, lesions. We also want to use a bigger data set. The UK Biobank, this has more than 153,000 um, study population. Another technique for the next steps would be graph neural networks. So this is Bayesian modeling. Bayesian is basically the probability of multiple theories given observed events. And this would, ha would help us model the relationship between the different uh, neural tracts or the regions of interest. And this shows the structural but the functional relationship as well, graphically, and includes the longitudinal aspects of the cohorts. If you're interested in this subject, here are the references, which I highly recommend. And yes, thank you very much for your attention. And feel free to ask any question at the following address. Thank you very much. Long live India and France friendship.